Um, uh, right now I'm, I'm actually playing linebacker, strong safety. You, you ain't gonna listen. What are some of your goals on the football field? In your senior year? Out for you. Um, you know, you know, going out my senior year, I'm gonna try to get us a state championship. Man. You know, gotta slow down so you can catch up. Roll up on something you can't handle. It's up, it's down on annual. For me, ain't no manual. Oh, Lewis Carter, how you doing, sir? Welcome to Ain't No Manual. Hey, well, I'm doing good. Appreciate you for having me. Yes, sir. Now I'm going to introduce you all to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Lewis Carter, also known as Big Lou. He's a four-star athlete. He's a four-star Under Armour All-American. He has over 40 scholarship offers. So there's over 40 major universities in America that want this young man. He's ranked That's in the up. top 150 in the country. Again, all the way from Supper Springs, Tampa, Florida. Welcome, my boy, Lewis Carter. <laughs> uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Lou, how does it feel to be an Under Armour All-American, man? Um, You know, it feels great because it's something I've been working for throughout, like, coming up through the Little League and stuff like that ever since I started playing football. Like, when I entered high school, that was something I was really thinking about, and that was, like, a huge goal for me to really achieve and get invited to. Now, Back in my day, because I'm from Florida, there wasn't any Under Armour All-American or none of those games like that. The biggest award in the 80s and 90s, even the early 2000s, was the Florida Dairy Farmer Award, which is Mr. Florida. Yeah. But right yeah. now, the Under Armour America game and the Adidas game and the Army game has pretty much taken over that. So you are amongst the elite in America. So congratulations <laughs> on that. Yes, now, I appreciate that. You said since Youth League and, and you've been dreaming or your aspirations is to get in the Under Armour game. When did you start yeah. playing football? I started playing at five. I started playing for the Jackson Heights Vikings. I started playing at five. And I never played flat. I just started off in pads. My dad put me in pads and then get to really play flat like that. You started off rough then. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had to. Now, what position do you play now? Um, right now, I'm, I'm actually playing linebacker, strong safety, and running back right now. Okay. Now, were you playing that when you first started out? Um, no, I started out playing, like, um, offensive guard, nose guard, and probably like, mostly O-line. You play offensive guard and nose guard? What, yeah. you was a fat boy? I played, I played, yes. No, I was, just, I was just tall, you know. I was taller than everybody back then, like, when we were younger. Uh -huh. Like, I mostly play offensive, offensive tackle and offensive guard. Wow. Yeah. That's all y'all little kids watching who can who complain about getting in and playing guard and tackle. This man yeah. is an Under Armour All-American, and he started off just like we try to get you guys started off, hands in yes. the ground. That's where the dogs yeah. come from. That's what, yeah, that's where the dogs come from. Yeah, man, when yeah. I play Little League, I play O-line and running back. If I went in the backfield, I'm on that line. So, yeah. Oh man. Now how long did you play on on the line? When did you become a linebacker and running back? I, I, I became like a linebacker and running back. I played so I played O line from like five to eleven. So I played O line and D line from like five to eleven. And then once I turned twelve, I had a coach, Coach Chain, who moved me to like running back. He started putting me at running back. I went from running back to well, I went from tight end to running back. And then I started playing D N. And after I played DN, I got moved back to linebacker. So you got with Coach Chain around 12 or 13, and he noticed the talent in you to, to switch you up, put you at linebacker and running back? Yes, yeah, sir. I started playing receiver. I, play, I started playing all the skill positions mostly. Yeah. Now, Coach Chain is popular around the Tampa area, for those that don't know. He has a great eye for talent, probably one of the best coaches uh, in, in, in this city. He really should be in the high school level, but he, he spent his time giving back to the youth, so – yeah, I love yes, that, sir. brother. Yeah, so he got you right. He put you in that backfield. Yes, sir. Now you want high school showing up. Yes, sir. Was definitely. Now, were you a score machine in, in, in the youth league, too? Sir? Were you a score machine in the, loop, in the youth league, too? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes, now, from the youth league, you decided to go to Tampa Catholic. Now, I know in this day and age, going to high school is like going to college. Did you have options? Did you want to go to Tampa Catholic? Or how did you end up in to the private school? 
Um, you know, I was looking into it throughout eighth grade and stuff like that. You know, I was looking to a couple of private schools like Jesuit, um, Temple Catholic, and um, Temple Bay Tech. It was like out of them three. And then, like, really, I was talking to Coach Jarrett and stuff like that, and talking to all like the the um, Temple Catholic teachers and stuff like that, and the administrators. And I came to, I went to one of the games in eighth grade, and it, it looked like a like a great place to be, yeah. like the like just the atmosphere of it. They see you all together and stuff like that. Yeah, one thing about Tampa Catholic and a lot of the private schools in that area or even mm -hmm. the public schools that have the honors and IB program, yeah. they really prepare you for the next level, which is college. And that's what this is yeah. all about, being prepared. Yeah. So yeah, once you leave that school and get into college, whatever of the 40 or 50 that you decide to go to, then you're going to mm -hmm. be all right. Just stay focused. Yes, Most definitely. Yeah. Now, you're going into your senior year. Yes, sir. What are some of your goals on the football field in your senior year? Um, you know, you know, going out with my senior year, I'm gonna try to get us a state championship. You know, mm -hmm. us and the team, we're gonna try to put the put a plan together and try to yeah. go for a ride, go for a ride this year. Yeah. Now, yeah. is state championship important to you? Yeah, it is. That's one of the that's one of the huge goals. Like you know, sometimes you fall short, but like, but once you fall short. You just learn from whatever you messed up, whatever mistake you made, you know. So this year, last year we fell short in second round, but this year what we learned, we learned from that, and we'll go through the summer like remembering and just like knowing what mistakes not to make. Right. Now, what was just what was your record last season? Um, we were, I think we were seven and three. We were seven and three. Mm -hmm. yeah. What teams did you lose to? We lost to. CCC, Clearwater Central Catholic. We lost to Jesuit, Berkeley. And then our last game in the playoffs, we lost to CCC, our second game. So you lost to Jesuit, which won the state championship. Yeah, state championship team. You lost to Berkeley. They played in the state championship. State championship team, yep. Yeah. And then you came back and lost to CCC in the second round of the playoffs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So y'all pretty stout. Y'all only lose the teams that go to the championship, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you just, just hard fought. Hard fought? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely, y'all guys are putting it together over there. I know Coach uh, McIntyre, he, uh, he's going to get a plan together for you guys. So I'm excited to see Most what definitely. you guys are going to do this season. Most definitely. Now, you got over 40 colleges wanting you. Yes, do sir. you have a top five, ten? Do you, have you made a decision on what you're kind of looking at? Um, no, I don't really have a top five and stuff like that. I'm working on it right now, really. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get out and visit colleges and stuff like that. Right now, I'm, re I'm just creating relationships and stuff like that and meeting the coaches because yeah. a couple of coaches came down. Just like create, create relationships with the coaches and trying to get out and visit some of those colleges and stuff like that. How are you uh, enjoying the recruitment experience? Is it too much for you? Are you tired of um, it? Man, over the time, I kind of, I kind of like got aggravated of it, but like you know, you just gotta keep God in your in your mind and stuff like that. Keep God with you and just keep going because sometimes it get hard, it get overwhelming. But I just gotta enjoy it because you know, it. I'm just blessed because it don't happen. Everybody don't get this chance and that. Like, right. they just don't get that chance to go through the same process as me. Everybody yeah. don't get that. Yeah, I've seen a hundred. I see more than hundreds of kids uh, go through this process. Uh, you've been getting recruited as a freshman. Yes, sir. I see some kids that kids that don't even see a offer or coach until their senior year after the last game. Yeah. So the process is different for everybody. Yes, sir. Did you know it was going to be like this, leaving little league and hopping into high school? Or what was this your goal to be um, going up by all the schools? What was it? Did you know it was going to be like this? Um, to be honest, really coming out of little league, I really didn't know too much about all like with the coaches and the recruiting process and stuff like that. But I knew, like, I was going to – my plan was to really come in high school and get playing time and be able to, like, play on the field and stuff like that and just show my talent off in front of everybody. That right. was the plan. But I, I feel like I put in that work my freshman year in the summer, in and out, like, season, in, in the season, out the season, um, during the off season, around spring time, running track and all that stuff. And then I just felt like I got, got better. And then my talent just showed 
speaking of the off season, how much time do you put into yourself working out outside of after football? Like right now, how much time mm -hmm. do you put in? I probably work out almost every day. Like I probably take like a Saturday or a Sunday off. It's like either one. So some some weekends I work out on Saturday. Some weekends I work on work out on Sunday. So some some weekends I miss a Saturday, but go work out on a Sunday. Some weekends I work out on a Saturday and miss a Sunday. So I somebody like, throughout the week I'm have probably like one rest rest day. But not, other than that, I'm lifting or like doing field work, working on my technique. And that's that's every day for you, six yes, days sir. a week. Yes, sir. How many hours do you spend, you know, working on yourself? Probably like, probably like two to three hours a day. Right, and that's outside of being at school working out with the coach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you putting in that work? That work, yes, sir. Day in, day out. Now, is your aspiration to go to the NFL? Is your aspiration just to get a scholarship to do something else with your life? Um, my, it's 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 to go to the NFL, but like, it's kind of like I'm using like football to like really build me up to that next level. I'm like, basically I'm playing football to like get me up to that next level. Now, when you go to college, what do you want to major in? Um, sport, either sports management or engineering. Either one of those, I haven't really made my decision yet. Okay, yeah, go there with a plan and get up out of there. Yes, sir. Uh, now, growing up playing youth football, even in high school football, do you have a favorite college team that you're a fan of? Um, not really. I didn't, but like one of my, I really wanted that LSU offer. Like once I started getting mm -hmm. offers, that was right. one of the big offers I wanted. I really wanted LSU. Yeah, why LSU? Um, because you know I seen a lot of top defensive players come out of that school, and I was just like yeah. watching them for a while. Once my recruiting process started, yeah, they put out some dogs. Yes, sir. Most yeah, definitely. Dog. Now, want to go back a little bit because I got some information on you from. In eighth grade, you were invited to Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. for your grades. Tell me about that. What was that about? Um, it was just like something I got invited to, cause you know in middle school, I was making like straight A's and stuff like that. So I got invited, and I didn't have to pay like any any money, cause I got it was like a little sponsor for I think Titus O'Neill. He sponsored me, and everything when we went on the flight, everything was free, because I think my my academics was right. It was right. My own grades and stuff like that was good. I ain't have no Bad conduct, no bad, like, I ain't really go through no bad situations in middle school. So you're a pretty serious dude on the football field and the school, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got to have yeah. any What drives you to work so hard like that? What makes you so focused? Um, Really, my parents, you know, they push me. And my family, overall family, and, you know, my goals and stuff like that I, I want to reach. But overall, my family, they push me, keep my head on straight, keep me focused. And then it just keep me going when things get hard. Now, serious question, being a young black man in America in these days and times, especially in, in Tampa, there's a lot of violence going on lately, a lot of shootings. Yes, sir. Shootings, robberies, a lot of stuff going on with the youth. Like, what's going on? How do you stay away from that? Um, Really, I just try to stay focused on what my main goal is. And, like, through that, I just try to keep everyone, like, around me, minds right and correct, keep keep them focused and motivated on what their goals are. Because, you know, most of the people I hang around got the same goals or, like, really trying to reach that next level, like, college level, or just, like, make a change in the culture. Speaking of that, you know, you got some of the kids around you, some of the peers around you. Yes, sir. Some of them haven't getting shot, uh, maybe doing the shooting, or they, they, they going left. You know, yes, doing the things you don't need to be doing, especially yes, as a young man. Mm -hmm. How do you feel when you see some of your peers go down and get locked up or, you know, get killed? You How know, does that affect you? <clears throat> um, it affects me a lot because some of those people I grew up with and stuff like that. But, you know, I feel like God got a plan for everybody. So if if he doing, if somebody doing like the wrong thing or, like, they in the wrong place, I feel like they, like, it's something like everything they gotta they got a reason to be there because they're gonna they're gonna learn from whatever state they mistake they made. So I feel like God got a plan for them. Now, Black Lives Matter. It's a yeah. big thing going on right now. I don't know why it's a thing. It shouldn't be a thing. You know, yeah. we always matter. All lives do matter, I believe that. That's true. But that being said, the HBCU mm -hmm. 
That's the new trend right now with Deion yeah. Sanders being at Jackson State. You got uh, mm-hmm. Hugh Jackson going to Grambling State. Eddie George at Tennessee State. I believe Tyrone Wheatley has a school too. Yeah. How many HBCUs have offered you? Because you got 40 big time scholarships. How many yeah. of those HBCUs? Um, actually, right now, I don't have no HBCUs. Or, you don't have, have any HBCU off? I don't have any. But hold, I mean, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You were the top 150, number one in Tampa, top 50 in Florida. We yeah. got FAMU Bethune here. Yeah. Dion from Florida. Yeah. You don't have an offer from none of these HBCUs? None of the schools. I mean, I talked to FAM a little bit, but they haven't offered. I don't have no HBCUs. See, that's, see a lot of people, we, we, we got to discuss that because yeah. a lot of people, I know my son, when he chose a major D1 school, a lot of people in my family mm-hmm. and around me was like, man, why he didn't go to an HBCU? You know, he's black. You know, why did he keep going to these big schools helping the other people? But yeah. I tried to explain to people that the HBCUs really don't recruit. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They don't. So they have to change the way they're recruiting. Like, they have to have the confidence to come up to Lou and say, hey, Lou, you need to be out here. That's you would love it. hmm No one has talked to you in the HBCU, huh? No. They, they think, they think they, some of them think, like, we too big of a, like, big of a person, big of a player. We big time and stuff like that. Nah, they just don't want to come out and really believe in themselves to really trust in, like, a player that they really have interest in their college. Well, that explains a lot about the mentality that, that, that needs to be changed. Because, like, like you said, they have to believe and have confidence to know that these top four-star, five-star players will have a great time on this campus. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, that needs to be fixed. I'm, I'm going to reach out to a couple of people. Yes, sir. Now, if I were to grant you one wish, a state championship in the state of Florida or mm-hmm. your opportunity to go to any school, for free that you want to go to, which one would you choose? I wish school would I choose? No, no. Which opportunity would you choose? Would you choose just oh. a scholarship or a state championship? That's a hard question. Because the um, reason I, I'm going to give you a chance to think about it. The reason I ask about it, because I see in a lot of areas that kids jump schools in high school. Yeah. They tend to go to the school that's winning the most because they think that's the best way to get a scholarship. They yeah. think that winning the state championship, if I win this state championship, Bama going to want me. Everybody going to want me. Yeah. I try to explain to a lot of parents, so I talk to parents all the time about the recruiting process. Yes, sir. State championship is not that important. It's a goal mm-hmm. for the team because you want to win every game. Yes, sir. If your goal is to get a scholarship, it's all about just going to the right program. Yep. So I always ask parents that question. What's most important to you, your child – going to a scholarship, I mean, going to a school for free, or mm-hmm. a state high school football championship? Yeah. So yeah. which one is most important to you? Really, yeah, what's most important to me is the scholarship, you know? It's a scholarship. Yeah. Most of the time, that state championship, it'd be forgotten probably like one or two years later. Next year. Yes, sir. Next year, because we got to get another one. So yes, sir. That's the championship. <laughs> it don't mean yeah. that. Now, have you ever been to an HBCU campus? Have you ever been to FAMU Bethune? Um, no, sir, I haven't. I haven't. Well, I've been to Bethune my eighth grade year for a little field trip. I went to Bethune my eighth grade year and, and saw the campus a little bit, the football field and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You've never to been them. to the, the Florida Classic game or the homecoming in FAMU? No, sir. No, sir. Oh, man. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't been to none oh. of that. Lou, this year? Yeah. You have to go to those games. I'm not talking about them off you, no visit or whatnot. I'm talking about by yourself, you and your fellas, hop in that car. Yeah. Go to the homecoming. Yes, sir. You got to go to it. Most definitely. You got go to go to it. We're going to try to get down to one. Oh, man. It's, it's different. It's different. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, just thousands and thousands of people. Uh-huh. The party, you know, y'all guys like the party. So all the, the all the fav, your most famous artists are going to be there. Whether it's you gonna see Kodak Black, NBA yeah. Hot Boy, yeah, City Girls, Migos, <laughs> all Little Baby and the Baby, all on one stage. Oh, when they come to the homecoming, yes, sir. And it's gonna be every night. 
<laughs> I ain't gonna pop up fan you know. I'm mad at them. They ain't made your offer yet. I got to call somebody, man. I got to, I got to see about that. Most definitely. Now, are you ready to leave home though? Um, you know, sometimes I get that feeling like I'm just ready to go and ready to go go off to college and just ball and get my grades and stuff like that. Sometimes I get right. that feeling like I'm just ready to leave the city. But yeah. most of the time I'm just trying to enjoy enjoy my family and stuff like that. And cherish these times while while I got it before I go off. Yeah, man, cherish it, man. Your 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 siblings, your cousins, everybody you got around you. That's yes, uh Spend as much time as you can with them before you go. Because once you go, yes, sir. you're gone. That's real. You, know, you come back for a little visit a few weeks, but yeah, spend that time, man, because life is short. So take advantage of that. Yes, sir. Take advantage of that. All right. So now recruitment is almost up for you. Yeah. Are you taking any visits before your senior season of football? Yes, sir. I'm probably going. I'm probably trying to get out to like really. I'm going to take. A couple of officials, probably to like Ohio State, um, mm -hmm. Oklahoma, Oregon, Clemson. Um, where else? Probably I'm gonna try to probably go to Notre, Notre Dame, um, Auburn, and a couple of and a couple more. Ooh wee! Yes, well, you got some options. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Now, I see your stats here. You had 50 solo tasks. Yeah. That's just by yourself. Yes, sir. Man, that's nasty. <laughs> Third of receiving yards. You're not even a receiver. You're a running back. So sometimes yeah. you got in that receiver. Yes, sir. I got in that receiver. You know, I got in that receiver and then ran a couple routes out of the backfield. And you had uh, just over 400 rushing yards this year. Yes, sir. How many touchdowns did you have? Um, I had six touchdowns this year. I had six running Man. touchdowns on offense. Man. When you go to college, do you want to do the same thing, play both ways, or did you want to what, – what is your goal for college as far as your um, position? You know, I probably, I, I've been thinking about it a little bit because some coaches have been, like, saying I can play anywhere. Like, it was one coach, he said, you can come to my school and play both sides. But I really haven't – a coach really haven't been, been telling me stuff like that before. Once that mm -hmm. coach told me that, that's when I really got the mind for, like, playing both ways in college. Do you think that you would want to play both ways in college? I mean, that's a lot, man. You're dealing with some – everybody like you or bigger. Yes, sir. Uh, so you ain't uh, never been hit by you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's real. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So you're yeah. talking about getting in the backfield and having 11 lose coming at you. Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. but That's different, man. Yeah, it is different. Yeah, and I done been in one of your games. I done seen you hit somebody. Like, it, it's supernatural. You just zoom in like yes, sir. a little yes, maniac, sir. man. Yes, sir. You want to go through that on the college level? <laughs> I got to think about that one. I think about that well, one. What, they going to try to tear you up? You the man, too? That's real. That's real. Yeah. Yeah, That's so real. you got an option to play in college running back or a linebacker or both. Yes, sir. And well, that, that's something to think about. But you definitely want to think about what you can do best and what's going to get you there. I mean, you can do both mm -hmm. at the same level. Yes, sir. So from now, from here on, it's a business decision for you. Yes, sir. Yeah, but you'll make the right decision, man. I'm pretty sure. Yes, most definitely. Now, do you have any advice to give to the up and coming youth players right now? Because I know it's a lot of young. Lily, Jaguars, and Hurricanes, yeah. and Packers, they looking up to you. They watching you every move, trying to follow what you do. Yeah. Do you have any advice to give them? Um, if I, I got – just just don't – just work and don't chase offers, you know. Just try to be be the best you you can be. Don't try to base yourself off what's, what the next person doing. Just be you. Be your best person. Be your, be your best person in the classroom, on the field, in the community, and – the first your your first impression means a lot to somebody. So how you when you first meet somebody, you gotta try to you gotta be the best person you are. You are and don't don't on the field don't chase offers because if you work it, if you're doing the right thing, all that stuff gonna come. It's gonna come to you. It's, uh, it's gonna all fall in place. Man, there's so many kids. All they talk about is offers, offers every day. Some That's kids don't even thing. play on the field. Yeah. <laughs> they want to know about offers. I don't get that, but yeah. That's some great advice, man. Work on being the best you can. I always told my told my boys, man, it ain't just be the best on your team. Then be yes, the sir. leader on your team. Then be the best in the city. Yeah. And everything else will come to you. Yes, sir. That's real. 
Man, that's awesome. So besides football, what else? What are your other plans your senior year? It's the last year. Um, you got any other plans, any other goals? Really, I'm just trying to – I'll probably, like, get in a couple – Groups and stuff like that. My senior year, like um, class groups, like after school, more after school activities and stuff like that with the school. Um, and that's really it. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm gonna probably get in a couple of after school activities. Mm -hmm. But really, I'm trying to get the people around me better and put them in a like in better shoes to succeed and stuff like that. I'm trying to help the people around me now. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Now. You should be a pretty popular guy at the school. You running for homecoming king? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Home uh, king yes, sir. Most definitely this year. Most okay. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. What about president? You in the y'all have vice president and all that stuff going on? Yeah. In school? Yeah. Most definitely senior. Year, I'm running for everything. I'm going for everything senior. Year. Yeah, because you at Tampa Catholic. That's a prominent school. So yeah, take advantage of all that. Yes, sir. Get all that on your roster. Yes, sir. All right. Now let's see here, man. TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. What are you on the most? YouTube. What do you spend your time doing? Because I know every time I see y'all guys, yes, sir, head sir. on the phone, head on the phone. So, yeah. what do you spend your time on in your phone? I'm probably on. I'm probably either on Twitter or Instagram. Okay. Twitter or Instagram, and I've been on Instagram to really like build myself or advertise myself, like put into myself, and I like, really get myself hot there. And if I'm yeah. on, and if I'm on Twitter, I'm probably looking at tweets and stuff like that, talking to coaches, and really mm -hmm. with the same thing, put myself out there even more. Mm -hmm. Now, do uh, coaches uh, contact you or reach out to you through Twitter a lot? Um, yes, sir, they do almost every day, every day. Oh man! Yeah. So you on your phone handling business, man? Your phone yes, is your little trap, basically. That's yes, uh, that's I'm just a, business. Yes, sir. Every day, every day I'm on it. Now you say you're on Instagram to help build yourself. So that's like building your brand. Yes, sir. Building my brand basically. Yeah. Now the college they have the NIL going on. Is that the NIL, NLI? Well, basically you can get paid yeah. for your for your liking image right now. That's what I'm that's what I'm working on right now. Yeah. Yeah. So man, you you thinking 10 steps ahead. Yes, uh. And I think I'm getting the brand. I think I'm gonna build me a brand soon. Like with like a little shirt company and all that stuff, jackets. I'm working on that right now. Yeah, work on it. Get it done, man. What are you listening to in the locker room or on that bus before you take that field? I probably probably most likely listen to like meat meal, like some motivational stuff that keep mm. me going, keep me hype, ready to go. And, um probably like meat meal, little baby, probably like <clears throat> Rick Ross. But uh -huh. I listen to a couple of older artists too. Yeah. I went to the game. Cause you know the older artists, they speak. They, sometimes they speak like the more real stuff than like the yeah the, the newcomers. <clears throat> yeah, it ain't no games with the old school. Yeah, that's real. That's yeah, real. The new school they like to use the words and make you yeah. fall in love with some fantasy talk. But yeah, yeah, old school is straight up. They speak the real. Yeah, killer be killed. That's how I go. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Anything else that you want to address to to? To the youth out there, or to the high school players, or to, to anybody else, anything else you got to say to these people? Um, really, well, just keep going. Everybody, just keep going, and um, whatever you want to do, whatever God's plan for you, just keep at it. And don't give up, cause yeah. your time gonna come. Everybody, time is different. Everybody don't have the same time. It's so like somebody might be just getting this, all this fame, all this likeness and stuff like that, but your time gonna come, cause God got a time for you. Yeah. That's what's up. My boy Lewis Carter. Yes, sir. Man, hey, you got to stay safe out here, man. You're you a popular dude out here. You yes, know, my, my advice, 1OG, to you, keep your head on a swivel. Yes, sir. Keep everybody out your business but your loved ones, man. And again, man, spend as much time as you can with your family, man. They doing a great job. They, they got you in the right place. Man, you on your way out of here. Yes, sir. Most You're on your way out of here, boy. I'm proud of you. Proud That's of good. you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, hey, looking forward to see what you guys are gonna do, man. Y'all, friend, we all gonna be Jesuit, man. What's up? Hey, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring it home this year. We gotta bring it home. <laughs> hey, but Jesuit is good though. Yeah, they, they, they every year they got a solid team. They every solid year, team. people don't realize that they they just good. 
Yes, and they consistent. They playing throughout the whole game. Throughout yeah. the whole game, they going to hundred. Man, what about Berkeley? You got something for them boys this year? Berkeley, yeah, we coming. We coming for them too. We coming yeah. for them too. Cause they they losing a lot of big series this year. So mm -hmm. we looking to like really replace a couple of players, and we looking to go handle business over there. Yeah. Yes, so you the senior, you you the leader of the whole squad this year. I mean, this this Most your definitely. squad. Most definitely, I'm leading. I'm leading the whole way. I'm leading the whole yeah. way. Yeah. A lot That's of cool. times, man. When I let's take the Buccaneers for instance. Uh huh. When we had Jameis Winston, and we had a couple of other defensive guys. Uh huh. I don't think the Buccaneers had the leadership yeah. in the locker room they needed. Yes. They had the same talent that Tom Brady is working with right now, or before he retired. Yes, sir. But leadership is the whole key. Tom Brady came in the locker room and cut all the play play out. Yeah. And got serious. And those guys started to move in yes. the way of their leader, which is Tom Brady. Yep, that's real. So leadership is important. So when you when you lead this year, you're leading everybody. And the yes, key thing about leadership is you gotta treat or teach different people differently. Yes, sir. Like, I coach different players differently. I might be more stern than one player. Uh -huh. I'm going to start with this player. Yes, sir. So you got to learn how to how to treat people, engage people, and that'll help with your leadership skills. But I think with the way you are, if your team takes on your attitude, yes, sir. man, it ain't no stopping y'all. That's real. That's real. No stopping y'all. So, man, go in there and just take over, buddy. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Most definitely. All right, my boy. Well, hey, this is it, man. I'm glad you gave me some time out your busy day. I know Nick Saban or somebody trying to call you right now to lock you in, bro. Yes, sir. <laughs> you already know. You already know. Hey, blam, blam, man. That's ain't no manual. Hey, I'm going to pull up on you later to take some promo pictures later today. Okay. You are ahead of It'll you be a wrap. Uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you for having me. Hey, this appreciate you, bro. I'm going to holler at you later, Big Lou. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, ain't no manual, we out. Gotta slow down so you can catch up. Roll up on something you can't handle. It's up, it's down on annual. For me, ain't no manual. Ain't no manual. Ain't no manual.